guys, and welcome to another episode of Monetize Your Message, where we are helping you um, get clear on your message so that you can use it and leverage it to make more money in your business. Um, as is our new tradition, we've been interviewing some awesome people, and today we're really excited to have Christina Scalera here. Um, and Christina is an brilliant attorney and has um, a great, uh, several great resources um, for you guys. And we're going to dig into what those are. She has contracts that range like an insane variety of businesses for creative entrepreneurs. She does all kinds of great stuff. So we're going to dig into that and how she uses her messaging and her business to um, to maximize her her profits. But um, before we start, just want to remind you guys, we are live. So that means if you guys have questions, feel free to type them in. We will see them in the comments and we will address them. And if you guys are catching this after, we are already um, up and recorded. You can still comment. We'll still see the questions and we will still get back to you. So with no further ado, welcome to the program, Christina. Hey guys, I'm so happy to be here. Thanks for having me. That was such a kind introduction, <laughs> um, which is really good because I always forget to introduce myself. Like I'm always like, let's talk about the topic. Let's go right into it. Um, so it was nice. Awesome. Cool. Well, I wanted to, sorry, go ahead, Jesse. Sorry. Um, we're super psyched to have you here. And I think one of the things that, one of the reasons why we're so excited to have you here is um, the topic that we kind of teased to our audience, which was this idea of when people steal your stuff, um, which I think is a problem that is really rampant in the digital space, but often not thought about until after it happens. <laughs> Definitely. And that's, I'm, that's why I'm so happy you have me here talking about this today. Um, like I said, or like Marie said, um, I'm an attorney and I only focus on practicing IP law, which is just a fancy way of saying intellectual property law. Um, so I obviously that that involves like drafting contracts and that's where the contract shop kind of got its, its roots. But most of what I do on a day to day basis is working with clients and kind of cleaning up these messes that we find online, um, you know, where they find their pictures, they find their blog posts. As uh, we just heard in our own mastermind, full disclosure, we're in a little group together, um, where someone's whole entire course was just lifted and put on another website. Um, unfortunately, that happens all the time. So it's not really a matter of if, it's just a matter of when this is going to happen to you, uh, because at some point you are going to be dealing with this, unfortunately. Yeah, so is there something that people can do ahead of time for, um prevention of this and what do you recommend for entrepreneurs? Yeah, for sure. So there's kind of three things that I talk about. Um, they're kind of, it's like the holy triangle of protection when it comes to your intellectual property. And so when I'm talking about intellectual property, um, I'm not going to go too far into it. You guys can Google it, I'm sure in five seconds and find out more than I could talk about for a whole hour. But um, essentially what I'm talking about in this realm is trademarks and copyright so there's more than that there's you know trade secrets you might be familiar with there's trade dress which is the way like a bag of chips looks um, or the packaging of a product and there's also patents um, but, but for the most part what we're talking about here are just trademarks and copyrights the difference they're kind of like sister properties together so the difference between a copyright and a trademark is that a copyright usually applies to a bigger body of work where if you removed it from um, its website, if you removed it from like the context surrounding it, you wouldn't necessarily know who created it. So for example, any of your client copy, right? Like you guys ghost write for clients sometimes, um, people reading that wouldn't necessarily know that that's North Star messaging copy. They would just think their copy, right? So that's a good example of something that qualifies for copyright protection, um, which I think most people here listening to a topic about messaging would be more um, interested in than, than trademarks. So I'll probably spend most of the time talking about that. But just to touch on it, um, you guys all have trademarks in your business, whether you know it or not. So the difference between a trademark and a copyright is a copyright, like I said, is that bigger body of work. And then a trademark applies more to like the branding type, type stuff. So when you go onto your website, um, most of you probably have a logo at the top. Uh, you probably have some that differentiates your business or stands out so that people can immediately see what it is that you do when they land on your website from Instagram or Pinterest or wherever. Um, those are examples of things that you would consider to be trademarks. 
marks are you're infringing someone else or they're great or case may be, you still have a trademark there. Um, I'm not saying it's a good one or a bad one or whatever. <laughs> I'm just saying you have them. So that's the difference. <laughs> What do we do to prevent this? Um, the reason why I had to introduce that is just because there's, like I said, this, this holy triangle of protection. Um, it's important to know the difference between, because there's there's really three ways to protect yourself. So the first way, um, looking at that copyright, this is really kind of unrealistic for a lot of business owners because they're one, not familiar with the government website, two, Maybe they're, um, but maybe like you're Canadian or maybe you're in South America somewhere and you don't even know that you should register your copyright with the U.S. Uh, mm -hmm. Copyright Office. Uh, so it, it's kind of unrealistic to know right out of the gate that you should be taking any kind of materials that prevent theft of your copy or images or whatever it is that could be lifted off of your website or course. Um, I think people just don't know that it's available. And I say it's unrealistic because, you know, again, other than like turning into shows like this. Um, so the way that you prevent, I, I don't like prevent this, um, but the way that you would significantly help yourself is to get an amount of uh, leverage if somebody ever does steal your work. And by leverage, I mean, they're going to be on the hook for a lot of money if they take it, if it's registered. If your work is not registered, then we have some problems because you have to prove what's called actual damages. Um, when your work is registered, you don't have to prove actual damage. This, this cost you, you have to actually show how much you're normally paid for a blog post. Um, and so for a lot of you starting out, that might not be possible, or you know, you don't know how many of the courses that they stole. Their you know, significantly reduced version of your course, uh, price-wise, how many of those people would have bought your course? And so it, it gets really hard to prove these actual damages, which is why registration is key because um, that that gives you the ability to just basically name a price. Yeah. Does anybody have questions so far? Because I feel like that that got like heavy really fast. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's good stuff, and um, it's yeah. I mean, definitely, if anybody watching has questions, but um, I think that's awesome advice is to look at copyright straight away because then you do have much more of a leg to stand on, right? If this does happen to you, so you know, maybe you can't prevent somebody from from stealing your work, but you can actually um, protect yourself in the instant that you find out, you know, you can actually get damages. It's way easier to do that. You have proof that this is your baby, <laughs> all that good stuff. So um, yeah. that's awesome advice. You know, the, the other to say like, this isn't just because I'm not popular I hope it is um, what what's really important that we haven't really touched on yet with these copyrights is the fact that um, no you're not going to prevent someone yeah from stealing. but uh, the, I should say the first time around but I actually have two photography clients um, and they've been ripped off quite a few times and at this point they've developed a reputation having their work uh, registered with the copyright office and thousand dollars if it's accidental um, 150,000 is if it's willful so for example if Getty images were to and upload it or the New York Times were to take make your blog post willful they knew better so you know that's what we're talking about here so it's it's not like you know a couple hundred bucks here or there like these are clients that are recovering on a regular fringers mm. anywhere from a thousand this is well just don't pay attention to it because we're so focused on um you know like how do we set up our more followers on instagram but you know at the bottom at the at the end of 
and is like how much money. Um, and I'm not saying this is like happens if you've taken the time. Um, listed by these copyright registrations, it could be if that is available to you because you've registered. So um, just a thought. <laughs> um, so does anybody have any questions about that or like, I know people are going to have questions about the registration. So if you have questions about where to register, um, even if you're in because so many companies and um, like press agencies and, and magazines and everything is based here in the United States. Obviously, I'm, I don't practice in the European Union, but they'll, they'll probably. Um, but just because you live in a foreign territory doesn't mean that you can't also register in the United States. It's pretty cheap. It's like $35 per work, single work, and then $55 for a collection. Mm -hmm. um, that. Yeah, and I think I think this is so helpful too because um, I think a lot of people, especially if they're they're kind of starting out, they're building this body of work, right? And that's their main way of gaining an audience and of getting clients eventually. And there's not that thought process of wait, I should copyright this or what's going to happen, you know, to it if it does get stolen. It's just like must produce the content, <laughs> um, right? So, do you have any advice? Sorry, go ahead. Oh yeah, no, as you're talking, I'm thinking like a great example of content that I would be registering if it were mine um, are like the pillar posts that you produce for clients. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I don't know what your contract says with your clients. Copyright. Something that I would consider, right? Like maybe it's, um, you know, it, the amount of work taken doesn't matter to a certain extent. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to get too into that today because I think it might be too confusing. Um, but, you know, if somebody takes a significant because you're explaining such, um, that's a great example of like something that you could register as that single work and get the. Mm, that's really good. Um, FYI, it's coming in and out a little bit. So, oh, no. like, the, 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 like, I'm hearing enough to, like, get what you're saying. <laughs> and your message is coming okay. through. But just, like, went into FYI in case we have, like, a blank expression for a second. That's what's going on. But I don't know. It may be something with, like, oh, okay. Jesse, you're muted, too. Oh, okay. <laughs> I was going to say, I might pull you real quickly out of the chat, Christina, and put you back there's in. There's a little bit. One sec, sure. everybody. Yeah technology if we, can, if we can get her connection a little better yeah sure okay there you go i do so, yeah if this doesn't work then i'll just try it should be pretty good i've been on calls all day <laughs> yeah yeah we may want to um real life people <laughs> <laughs> well we may want to um still not working it's like in and out sorry i feel like i keep interrupting you without even really seeing it <laughs> Let me what do you think? try this. Okay. Technology. Always oh, no. fun. <laughs> okay, say things. I see you blinking. <laughs> That's good. So for those of you who are watching, just um, a quick FYI. So we've been using Be Live, and it's a great platform for streaming videos like this where you're interviewing multiple people. Um, it is still kind of beta, though, so there are some tech glitches that happen from time to time. And it seems to be mostly tech glitches around sound um, that have consistently come up over the last few months. So can you guys hear me? Can we hear you? So yeah. far, so good. Awesome. Okay. Okay. Let's roll. <laughs> so, well, thank you. Um, one of the questions that um, I know has come up in our audience and in other kind of areas I've seen on around, just kind of around, mostly from bloggers, but also from people who have courses and things like that, is if they haven't taken these precautions, if they haven't gotten a copyright and things like that, and they realize, oh crap, my course is in this place, or my entire blog has been copied and put here what is like the first thing that they should do? 
Yeah, I mean, and it's so funny because this, this happens literally all the time. I know there's tons of people probably watching this that are like, that would never happen to me, but it happens all the time. Mm. Um, so I'm glad you guys are asking. The first thing I would do if it were my blog or my course that, that was copied is I would look to see um, personally, just because my, my practice is mostly in trademarks, I'd be looking to see if there was any trademark infringement because I feel like that's easier typically, not always, right? There's always exceptions. Like somebody watching this is going to be like, she's wrong. Like there's <laughs> whatever, you know what I mean? Like, but I, I feel like that's easier to prove and it's easier to prove damages there that someone's infringing your trademark. Um, so I would probably look for something like that where like the header of the course or the name of the course or the tagline of the course or the tagline of the blog or the logo of the blog, all of those things are what I would be looking for first. Um, and then it's seeing what kind of recourse I have. I think at that point, like if, if you didn't want to take some kind of legal action against them, um, obviously an email letting them know that this has happened is the first thing that I would do no matter what. Um, but you know, that's kind of as far as you can get on your own. If you do mm -hmm. want to take legal action, that's not a situation where you can DIY. Like that's where you need to hire an attorney and explain the situation. Um, and they'll just tell you a lot of attorneys offer like free consultations and stuff. And they'll be able to tell you like, this is something I'd be happy to take on. Like, here's my hourly rate, whatever. Um, or, you know, this is probably not worth it and they won't mess with it for you. So I think that's what I would do in that situation. Um, as, as far as the email, because everybody, um, as soon as this happens and it's happened to me too. So I know the feeling, um, I don't, I don't want to like project and say like, I know exactly how you're feeling, but I know like a feeling how I felt and I know it wasn't good. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, just having that pit in your stomach, just feeling like your whole inside like curl up and you're just so angry and mad. Um, you know, how dare this person take my stuff and, and you use it like their own. All, um, it's really real. And the best thing that you can do in that moment is just to like X out of the browser and go for a walk, Yeah, which is not like what people want to hear an attorney say, but the worst thing that you could possibly do is write that angry, you know, four page long novel email and explain to them how horrible of a person they are and all that. Um, the best thing you could do, like I said, is go for a walk, come back a couple days later, um, you know, write them an email and just say, you know, I noticed that this is happening, whatever the situation is. They stole your photos, they took your blog post. Um, it seems like this may have been, I try to give people the benefit of the doubt and give them you know, like an out. I'm like, it seems like this may have been accidental. I noticed that you're on my email list and maybe you just liked a post that I had. Um, so I try to give people a, a way out. I'm not saying that's what everybody should do, but I, I think it's like courteous the first time it happens. Um, and just let them know that you know most people, I don't want to say all again, because there's going to be someone out there that's like, no, people aren't really like that. But um, most people, when they get caught like that, they will react in one of two ways. One, <laughs> They definitely knew about it and they're super defensive um, or they're very apologetic and somebody either did the content for them and they didn't know or um, they thought that they were like honoring you in some way, which sounds really crazy and kind of stupid. But I have actually run into two situations where the person who copied the content and didn't give credit back to the original creator um, thought that they were doing them a favor by sharing their content with credit. Some people don't know they're ignorant because someone else did the content for them. And then sometimes they really did take it and they know better. Um, and they, they're, they're really embarrassed that they got caught. Yeah, for sure. So when you are, I, I want to dig a little bit into, into your messaging in your business yeah. um, too. So it seems like a lot of this that we've been talking about is like touching on those like horror stories, right? And like that whole thing about like, not if, but when yeah. and all of that. So obviously there's a lot of like, there's a lot of messaging that you could put out there, like protect yourself because, you know, these things do happen and they do cause damages and you may not be able to get that back if you don't protect yourself. Um, so do you have other ways of... Um, also messaging with your clients because we have a wide variety of people watching this who probably aren't attorneys, but they understand that people may be coming to them for whatever it is they do in a, in a panic, right? <laughs> so are there other ways that you have to message what it is you can do that aren't like 
oh God, oh no, based, right? Like, I don't want to say fear-based because it's like legit. Like these aren't just like made up fears. Like this really happens. But do you have other ways to communicate like how important this is? Yeah, so I mean, I think it's, I I never use fear-based marketing. I know that's a tactic that a lot of attorneys kind of, I don't know, like reduce themselves. I don't want to say reduce themselves because um, I don't think it's like a bad marketing tactic, right? Like at the end of the day, they're just trying to put food on the table for their family right. too. Um, but I definitely am not a fan of using fear-based marketing just for the the sole purpose of the fact that I think that it's a little bit demeaning. Like I think that you as a business owner know that you need some kind of legal protection. And if you don't, it will become a, immediately apparent at some point. Um, so, you know, I think I have that working in my favor is that I don't, I don't have to message a lot around this. Like that's already a pain point. It's already something that people have told themselves. And I believe this is a story that you guys tell yourself. Um, but it's already a story that people are telling themselves that they don't know. Um, legal is too hard. It's kind of like me with math, right? Like I tell people like, <laughs> I'm so bad at math. I can't do numbers, right? But look, be good at numbers. Um, same thing with you guys. Like you could be proficient in legal stuff for yourself. Um, I That's part of my mission is to help empower people see like what they can do for themselves and then fill in the gaps, the deficiencies with somebody who is a professional um, and practices law. So, you know, I think a lot of my messaging is about like showing you kind of like shining a light on the things that are scary and saying like, look, it's not really that scary. Like here's actually probably what you should be scared of. And you didn't even know about it. Um, but like all this stuff that's keeping you up at night, like that's actually not that scary. So I try to create, I try to craft a lot of messaging around that by, by doing a lot of like tutorials and teaching um, and just kind of like putting things into the simplest terms possible because um, I, I tell this story a lot and I'm, I'm not really proud of it. I love my law school, but I'm not proud of this. Um, one of the teachers at my law school actually told us to use the most complicated, most legalese driven, like scariest messaging essentially that we could, because that would create clients that are then reliant on us. Mm. Um, I don't wow. agree with that. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah, I, I don't think that that's a, um, like, I don't think you're a good attorney if, if you have to resort to like making clients completely dependent on you. Um, and I think that would actually be kind of horrifying. Cause like, I don't want to get that call on a Saturday night, you know, like I'm happy to take emergency calls, but not like every Saturday, you know, and that's what you're teaching your clients is that everything's an emergency. So I think that's how I try to craft my messaging, um, to move it away from like the fear base. So like acknowledge that the fear is there, but then like show why it's, it's not as scary as they might think it is. I love that idea of accessibility too. Um, just like looking through your contract shop and stuff and like all of the different, the wide variety of contracts available. It, you can get so specific to what you do, like photography and calligraphy and stuff like that. And it's so needed, I think, because I mean, how many people here have like Googled contracts for insert in blank and then they just get this long list of things up and it's like, where do I even start? And then you're just stealing someone else's template and that's just creates its own whole mess. Um, so I think having that accessibility and shining that light on things that are not as scary as they may seem is so important. Yeah. Yeah, no, I, I agree. I, I think, um, I mean, a lot of the contracts that are in the shop are informed by my own experience. I just, I love to do new things. And, um, like I, I have an equine photography contract template that sells like gangbusters. I noticed that one. That's amazing. (laughs) But it's because, I mean, I'm almost 30. I've been riding for over two thirds of my life. Like I've trained horses that are involved there. Um, I tried to be a calligrapher before I did this. Like I wanted a career in the creative industry. So um, I think, you know, and it's kind of like Gary Vaynerchuk. Am I allowed to cuss on this show? I don't know. <laughs> Go for it. <laughs> yes. Okay. So like Gary, Gary Vaynerchuk talks a lot about how you need to eat your own shit. And when he says that, he doesn't mean like, you know, Whatever. Yeah, that's the <laughs> meaning of it, obviously. But, like, you need to, you need to go out there and like do the things that you're talking about. So if you're mm-hmm. mapping out sales funnels, like you better have sales funnels of your own. Um, if you're creating a contract template for photographers, like you better go out there and do some photography of your own. Like try to get a client, see, see what that's like for for your your customer, mm-hmm. and see if 
um, you know, like the struggles that they're facing so that you can incorporate that in there. Um, at, or at the very least, like go out there and talk to your ideal market, even if you don't want to like be them for a day or a week or whatever. Um, so, you know, make sure that you're going out there and you're, you're crafting that message around the things that you're hearing from them in their own words. I think that as far as like monetizing my message has been the goose that laid the golden egg. It's like going and reading and like copying almost word for word. Sounds kind of ironic. We, we just talked about copy. <laughs> um, like short little snippets of what they yeah. say, right? So uh, the phrase legalize your biz, I actually got, I, I don't really like that phrase, but it, I, the name of my book that I give away for free, because that was what everybody was calling it. Like, how do I legalize my biz? How do I get legit? And so those are now the names of my courses, even though I never would have thought to name them that. So mm. I think that that's the difference between like just having a product and having a product that resonates. Totally. There's a, there's a woman named Amy Hoy who we, I talk about all the time, but she, um, she has this course that's actually for software developers who want to sell their like e-products and um, they don't know how, right? Because they're software developers. They're not like business majors or marketers or any of that. They don't have that background. They just have like, it's very similar, right? They have the creative background, but maybe not the business chops. Um, and that's one of the things she recommends. She calls it pain safari. So you like go on a safari and you like look for the people who are your target audience members and like go to their watering hole and like just observe and just like see what they say. And yeah, she also recommends like copy pasting, not that you're going to post it anywhere, but just for your own like you know, reference of your own research. And then you may find like a word or a phrase here or there that you could lift out that like so resonates. So it's totally what you've done. So Amy Hoy would be proud. <laughs> yeah. So um, let me think. I feel like I had another question for you. Um, I'm trying to think of what it was though. It has escaped me. Jesse, do you have anything else? I'm trying to remember what I was going to say. I, I was going to ask you what made you decide to specifically focus on creative um, oh, yeah. area, but you kind of answered that a little bit. Yeah. Obviously. Yeah. I am. Um, and I mean, I, this isn't legally focused. Like if you guys have legal questions that I'm not answering, feel free to email me. Hello at the contract shop.com. I'll get back to you. Um, but I got into this, uh, and this should be like an encouraging story, I hope, for most of you out there that are like, I don't know how to craft my message. I don't know what my, me my message is going to be. Like, what's my purpose? These are questions that are too big for me, whatever. Um, I was working in-house at a legal department, and I decided to, uh, I was having a lot of health problems at the time. So, like, massive health problems, like, basically passing out, like, mm -hmm. randomly. So, I was basically in this like meltdown state and I just, and this is like so cliche. So I hate telling the story, but it's, it's true. Um, so like all these problems, I decided I'm going to take kind of like a sabbatical type thing. I'm going to try out like the complete opposite career that I could have chosen from an attorney, which was a yoga teacher. Um, coincidentally found somebody that was a yoga teacher who had formerly been a corporate counsel. So we became wow. really close. She became a mentor to me, um, kind of, yeah, introduced me to this like online business development world. Well, around the same time, two photographers, Krista Jones and Natalie Frank, um, they started the Rising Tide Society like short, a couple years after I had gotten into this. And I was kind of like, what am I doing? What am I going to be? Like this yoga thing isn't really working out. So I'm a couple of years into that. They start the Rising Tide Society. And um, through that, like through the hashtags, the Tuesdays together, that kind of thing. I was introduced to all these different creatives and I'm like, I could do this, right? Like I was already blogging. I was already putting graphics on my blog. Um, I thought I wanted to be a calligrapher. That was like a really promising career opportunity at one point because it just, it wasn't as saturated as it is now. Um, never thought about being a photographer, but I like photography. I'm good at it. So I had all these like multiple pursuits and passions and I didn't know how to mold them all together. I knew I wanted to, but I didn't know how. And so it really happened accidentally with the, the start of the Rising Tide Society, they have these things called Tuesdays Together every month and they focus on a topic. And just like, this is so crazy, but I hadn't been to one since they started. And the first one I go to is in October of 2015 and they have, uh, the topic was legal. So I, um, I go there, you know, I introduce myself as like Christina, the yoga teacher who doesn't really know what she's doing with her life and um, <laughs> didn't out myself like as an attorney. And as they're talking, 
everything they're saying is wrong, right? I'm just like, oh my gosh, this is like horrible, right? And so I finally chime in. I'm like, actually, I'm an attorney. Like, I here, you know, like I just like help them all. Um, and that was when, yeah, um, that was when like started asking me like, do you sell contracts? Like, do you have this thing? I have this friend that has this legal problem, and her cousin has this thing. I'm gonna call. I'm gonna send them to you. They're gonna call you. Um, and it was really funny because I felt like everything I was doing up until that point was like hitting a door, like just door after door after door slammed in my face. And then here I was like all of a sudden a floodgate of opportunity that I never even asked for or anticipated. It was completely accidental. And like within a month, I have a new law firm that has been like, we're just getting a website. I'm two, almost two years into this thing and I'm just now getting a website. Um, so like that kind of gives you an idea of like how business has been. And then obviously the contract shop kind of came out of that because I realized you know, not everybody can afford an attorney. Um, I... It was going so well. Thank you for us, Christina. I loved this story too. Oh, no. All right, I'm gonna, yeah, there we go. Okay, she pulled herself out. That really is such a great, like, it's such a great example of niching and finding that narrow niche where like you have something so big such as like being an attorney and then can narrow it down to, I'm gonna be an attorney for these creative people who really have no idea what they need, <laughs> which I feel like we've been in that boat totally. Oh yeah, but I think part of, the takeaway from that that's so powerful is like Christina is one of them, right? She is creative. She is like inspired by her clients. She loves what her clients do. Um, and that whole like, you know, put yourself in your client's shoes for a day kind of thing isn't that hard because like, like we were just saying, Christina, you are, you are a creative, just like the clients you serve. And that really helps, I imagine, with like feeling really impassioned about you know, what it is you do and who you're actually helping. Is it working now, Christina? Can you hear us? No. <laughs> the worst. Wait, here we go. So sorry. Jesse is actually spot on. No, I was just, Jesse is like spot on. Like I can hear her perfectly, but Marie, your connection's a little bit like womp womp. Sorry. <laughs> The worst. That's okay. You just have to listen to me. For I me. hope my connection's okay. In and out. But yeah, I mean, for me, maybe it's my connection. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Actually, though, I think that story might be a really good place to kind of wrap things up on because I think it really does sure. kind of encapsulate what your where your messaging journey and how you got to this place where you are helping these people that you're really passionate about helping and how you are now able to monetize that message. So is there anything else that you want to kind of add before we wrap things up? Like maybe where to find you. Yeah, so if, if you go to the contractshop.com forward slash free book, all one word, um, that will give you that legalize your biz book for free that I was talking about. And I wanna do something special for them. So if, if you guys, um, Perform live. They're watching them. Guys, um, we'll just do that. So the contractshop.com forward slash monetize. Um, we will put a little special thing up there. So we'll we'll do probably like the client contract checklist, which normally I think I sell for like twenty something dollars, but we'll just give oh. it to you guys for free for watching. Yay! Thank, thank you. you so much. Yeah, for sure. Our people will love that. And All right, thank you guys. Yeah, no problem. And for those of you who are not catching us live, um, we will be having this replay. It is available on our Facebook page. It is also going to be available on our YouTube channel. Um, and if you're on our email list, you'll get the replay in your inbox sometime this week, tomorrow or Thursday. Yes. All right. Thank you so much, Christina. Sounds good. Thank you.